I think ever since I saw the G made R1, probably in ads, I think over at A main, um, I may have even seen this on Amazon or something like that at some point. Ever since I saw those, I've always kind of thought they were the really just the kind of the coolest looking buggy. Um, I, I like it more than like say some of the axial and low C stuff and all that. I really do think the looks of this thing is kind of they they nailed it. Um, because it really does look like an actual, you know, rock buggy. And so uh, I couldn't pass it up. I ended up getting this thing for a fraction of what you would pay new to build a kit and then, of course, get all the stuff, the electronics to, to put in it. Um, found it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I've mentioned it before. Um, if you're not in the, in the general practice of going there every couple days and dropping a couple search terms in to see... Uh, just what's out there do yourself that favor and 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 keep an eye out this is how you can get pretty decent crawlers for you know a much more affordable price than buying brand new so you know the people that have these i think love them and they understand what their limitations are and they work pretty hard to either upgrade to get around those limitations uh and then the other people that don't have them just think that we should all buy axial capras and I don't have 600 bucks to throw at a Capra, you know, I had 200 bucks to throw at a well-appointed used four-wheel steer capable uh, crawler and it showed up, had a couple quirky things wrong with it. The servos were shot as soon as I pulled it out of the box. The wheels were freaking out the second I plugged my radio system into it and all that jazz. Um, and so, you know, it was probably about a $50 setback, you know, reaching into my parts drawers to pull out two fresh servos in order to be able to throw on this thing. I was a little annoyed by that. Not to mention the guy, I think, vaped, and the thing just absolutely stunk. <laughs> and I don't mean to, to complain, but I smoked for 34 years of my life, so I, I literally had no sense of smell for over half of my life. And so when I finally stopped smoking, I finally realized exactly how bad that stuff smells. And when I pulled this thing out of the box, man, I felt like I needed to fumigate my apartment. Anyway, um, after getting it outside last night and kind of running around and spray paint and all that good stuff now, I think I've kind of got the smell a little bit tamed. So that was, uh, that was one of the first things that really struck me. Uh, what else can I say about this thing? People that have them, love them. Uh, they often complain about the wheel and tire setup and I do not disagree with that in any way. I think these are more geared for like a monster truck basher and not necessarily a rock rig like this. They're a little bit too wide at almost two inches and so they really, they push things out too much. There's too much width to deal with with trying to turn in tight spots. They get themselves really hung up because of the extra width. Um, there's ton of actual, you know, physical traction capabilities about them, uh, but there's just a couple of things that they sort of lack. And also too, you'll see that the drivetrain of this kind of has a little bit of slop from front to rear because this is a portal axle setup and the tolerances are not 100,000%, you know, machine tight. Um, so, you know, it has, it has a couple quirky things. So this maiden voyage was just me kind of taking it out, see what was going on with it, seeing how it runs, see how it operates. I mean, I'm doing stuff right here that I've never been able to do with anything that I have, including my uh, my Red Cat Gen 7, which is pretty much you know set up about to be able to handle like the most severe stuff that I've ever encountered here. Um, and this thing just seems to walk right over it all with really not too much of a problem. Um, it's equipped with a 540-27 turn running on a 40 amp ESC with my uh, Dumbo RC four channel system. And I get four channel capability off of channel four, which is literally just centered when it's off and then left and right whenever you activate the toggle from one way to the other. Uh, I didn't experiment at all with that last night. I just really wanted to get the feel for what this thing was gonna do, including stuff like this, like at what point it's gonna roll on me. And there goes the first scratches. So, um, but as you can see, it came with skid plates on there, uh, four wheel steer, like I mentioned, uh, didn't show up with a battery or anything like that, but, uh, the shocks themselves, let's take a second to talk about, talk about those shocks. Those are the G transition shocks. And, uh, a lot of people that have used those, again, they either love them or they hate them. And I'm not exactly why sure, not exactly why anybody would dislike these shocks. These, I think personally are the best thing that I own. Um, they were pretty much seized right up when I pulled the thing out of the box because they didn't have a single drop of oil in them. They probably never been never been oiled at all. So I decided to open them up and see what was going on. 
and I found out that uh, it's actually a, an internal dual stage. You have uh, the piston itself, and it sits above that piston as like a one and a half centimeter uh, bump stop coil, and then sitting below that is about a one and a half inch full coil. And so that piston uh, plate rides in the middle of those, so it doesn't let it fully bottom out. And then it also, the long spring keeps it in droop mode. And then you, of course, can switch the location of those springs so you can run it so it sits a little bit higher, and then you put the bump coil on the bottom side. But I'm gonna leave it this way. And so what I did was added a little bit of thinner viscosity oil, um, actually kind of filled them up about a quarter of the way. Uh, the seals are holding, and I will happily report that as soon as I put that oil in there and started working the shocks a little bit, I was immediately blown away by how they function. And so if you kind of pay attention to like what this thing does uh, throughout the video, you'll see that it's got this really, really cool, just sort of bowl full of jello organic motion about it that doesn't, doesn't overwork, and it does exactly what it needs to do when it needs to do it. Um, and I do believe that once I change the wheels and tires on this thing that it's probably going to start handling considerably better and it'll it'll definitely perform entirely differently and uh, you know at some point in time I'll probably seek to upgrade to brushless not just yet but that's definitely going to happen um, which means a full ESC overhaul and then you know I'll probably look to put uh, in a, some much much higher strength higher capacity servos in these as well um, and I think when if I go and do all of that, and I'm really going to push this thing to that point, that would probably include getting, say, like Capra F9 axles on here. That seems to be a common thing that a lot of guys are doing with these. Um, I joined the G1 message board over at Facebook, and uh, those guys are actually really helpful, and they seem like they, they all really love these rigs. Everybody that has them really likes them a lot. And so... Um, feel like I'm going to be able to get some good information on how to, to push this thing to a couple other levels. So I had fun with it last night. Um, like I said, I'm just doing stuff that I really haven't been able to do with any of my other ones. So it was kind of cool exploring a little bit of territory that wouldn't normally be something that I would get into. Um, it's got its faults, but I am not in any way unhappy by that, you know, about that at all. I think uh, it's just a matter of learning what the crawler does and what it's capable of. And uh, other than that, you know, I think, uh, you know, if you're interested, always keep an eye on Facebook Marketplace. Um, if you're going to go shopping for a new crawler or you want to find out how to get something that is affordable, uh, just like Tom Lee RC did a big video the other day about the whole keeping an eye on Facebook Marketplace and keeping an eye out for cheap crawlers or how to find cheap crawlers. I have bought so many on Facebook because, you know, I'm constantly just looking for a deal and... Um, Every once in a while, something that I have had my, my mind set on for a bit pops up. I mean, there's a bunch of R1s that are out there, and this one just happened to have the right price with all the right uh, amenities added to it. And so I, uh, I contacted the guy and worked the deal, and here it is. So um, you can see here, I think, this is a good example of how these tires work completely against this thing. Uh, see how it just got thrown off of that, and that was because the front wheel, as soon as... As soon as it unweighted and did some stuff there, the tires were a major factor in all of that right there. And they still are a factor through the rest of this. So that's probably gonna be the biggest uh, upgrade that I can do to this thing right off the bat is get something that's a little bit better for what I'm trying to do with this truck. So it's got the power to flip itself right back over, but it's also got the power to get through a ton of different stuff too. So. Um, it's all about learning how to run your crawlers, and it's all about uh, figuring out what they need and what they don't need. So uh, this is part one, and I do have another part coming up. I just got to get busy on editing that. So once again, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Please do feel free to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I just film running videos, basically, uh, the occasional how-to, and I buy lots of random crawlers. Take it easy, everybody, and I will see you on the next one.